Hi, everyone, and um, welcome to the afternoon session. Um, so um, to kick off the afternoon session, we have Manny Baxter. Hi, Bax Manny. Hi. So um, we'll be having, um, she'll be talking to us about creating data-driven campaign. Um, Manny is, um, is the manager of campaign operation at Aqua. All right, Manny, you have the floor. Great, thank you so much. Um, so I have my slides on the right hand side. Great. So should be taking up the full screen. Thank you so much. All right. Well, good afternoon and good morning to everyone joining today. Um, thanks for tuning in to creating data driven campaigns. So my name is Marnie. I joined Aquia during the acquisition of Modic in 2019. In July 2020, Modic Cloud became Campaign Studio under Aquia's new branding. So I will be using that term today. Um, I've been working uh, hands-on with the implementation of the platform as the manager of um, campaign operations. Oops, sorry about that. So today I will be reviewing all the elements that can get you ready for launching data-driven engagement aware campaigns to give your audiences true personalization. Uh, we'll begin with defining automated camp messages and data-driven campaigns. So what are automated messages? I'm sure this is familiar to everyone as either a marketer or a recipient of a digital message. Uh, you see them on websites, emails, text messages, et cetera. It's any automated message or series of messages. To break this down, there are two types of these messages. One is for operational sense. Think of requesting a password reset. Um, I know I do that all the time. <laughs> online order confirmation emails, online monthly bank statements. Uh, think of these um, as customer triggered action requested send. So a password reset is something that I, as a user or customer has specifically requested from the brand. So I'm telling the service what I want or that I need something from them. And in return, their digital messaging automation platform is collecting information and triggering a response communication. So it might be something scheduled like bills um, or something that triggers instantly like asset links or login codes. Uh, the other type of digital messages come in the form of promotional driven messages. This type is one everybody knows well. Uh, think of a brand's email hitting your inbox, push messages on your smartphone or uh, web page pop-ups, um, also known as focus items uh, in Campaign Studio. So an automated marketing message is typically um, in the form of welcome emails, introducing you to a brand or educational in nature, uh, like signing up for a new service, like a gym or bank. New members will receive a series of emails to make sure that they're introduced to the brand and can receive how it works messaging. Um, <laughs> these are considered maybe onboarding types of nurtures. Uh, you're also likely to think of a series of messages like holiday campaigns. Uh, you might see a series of different emails promoting Cyber Monday or Christmas shopping from one brand over the course of four, six, eight weeks, like uh, new products, final days, in-store pickup. Those could also be automated messages. So our second definition is for data-driven campaigns. This is next level marketing. Uh, this is where the marketing strategy kicks it up a notch and brings in elements of their database, uh, collected data points to create that personalized type of messaging. So we all know Black Friday is coming, um, but your audience might need to be broken up into different segments to receive different offers or different messaging. So as a marketer, uh, do you bucket by geolocation? Does your audience know um, want to know about new items or sale items? Do older age groups need different messaging than younger age groups? Um, on the B2B side of this, uh, do you change your tone for job level target messaging? Do CTOs um, get different messages than associate engineers or CMOs versus social media interns? Uh, your data and custom fields are going to drive these messages. So we have two types of data-driven campaigns here between the operational messages and the marketing messages. So I'm giving these two examples because one of these is completely customer triggered. Someone in your database is sending a message that they need or want something from your company. That is behavior-based data point. 
The other is typically determined by the marketer on the company side, though doing their best to look at data and understand the best next, next move. Uh, a marketing message is still going to be undetermined by the recipient. It is driven by a preset profile data fields that were created to align with the strategy um, of a marketing team. So with this in mind, I ask, what kind of data triggers your campaign? Is it profile-based or is it behavior-based? Are your filters bringing in data that you've collected on form or are they from behavior fields like visiting certain web pages, selecting favorites or wish lists? All this is data that you can react to. Using Campaign Studio, you can grab those types of data points. Um, so if you're considering just getting started with a nurture email um, or email campaign um, to introduce your brand or product, you will likely want to look at simple profile data to get started. Uh, then you might start to layer in upsell opportunities based on either profile data or behavior data. Customers really expect both at this point. They're giving marketers both types, so it's important to listen to them. These two types of data are going to drive your personalization efforts, making unique customer experiences for your audience. Now, before we get into the more specifics of using Campaign Builder, um, I wanted to share Acquia's survey results um, from, from last year. So, um, when enterprise level marketers, um, marketing leaders were asked how successful were their personalization strategies, a large group determined themselves to be only somewhat successful. Now, as an email marketer, I subscribe to hundreds of brands to see what's going on, um, examples of what other companies are sending out. And I'll be honest, I think 49% is a little high for best in class personalization efforts, um, but that's why it's important to look at data. <laughs> Anyways, um, thinking of all the emails in my inbox um, at this point, the high first name personalization token is just table stakes at this point. I'm really expecting more. I'm expecting brands to give me better incentives to shop if I never have, better recognition of the products I browse, better acknowledgement of what I bought before, something um, you know, that's gonna spark interest. I'm expecting pieces of dynamic content in every message and every time I come back to the site or app. So that's the basis of a successful personalization strategy. Um, but, you know, that's no easy task for marketers. Uh, that is where marketing automation platforms come into play. So I'd like to introduce you to Campaign Builder. It's the grand central station to a fully data-driven campaign strategy. The Fluid Builder allows you to make changes and pivot when needed. You have a new data point to test out. You can drop it into the Builder easily without stopping and recreating the campaign. You see your metrics split out and make several different communication actions across different channels. So the builder is really what locked me into Modic. Um, I love getting my hands on it. It's a definite selling point for most, um, for most teams and across different functional teams. So let's get into building out campaigns. Um, first question, uh, what is your goal? You might have one goal and then be able to create a few sub goals. But also keep in mind, as your audience flows down a campaign path, you will definitely be capturing more and more data points. So I'm going to use an imaginary company as we walk through the setup of the campaign. Uh, I love skiing, so let's imagine I'm a marketer for an Alpine ski gear retailer. Uh, my top goal is to sell any and all ski gear, but I also want to have some sub goals of creating brand awareness throughout the year, not just during ski season, I want to gather more data points, like maybe active versus inactive records and communicate any company updates that might be relevant to the customers. So for this, <laughs> I'm going to focus on an email drip in my campaign. It's my bread and butter, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, starting in September, I'm going to start promoting new products to my audience. Think of just arrive new products as a subject line. Uh, then I'll proceed with the other touches I have listed here. So um, to spur excitement, I might share, you know, the Al Almanac's predictions for a heavy snow winter. Uh, due to COVID safety awareness, I might explain how touchless curbside pickup might work. Uh, I can prep my audience for Black Friday and uh, Cyber Monday sales and even send out a survey um, possibly asking my audience, where do they plan to ski this year? Where are they traveling, if, if at all? <laughs> so based on the list of campaign touches, 
My top level goal should be hit. I'm incorporating two sales driven campaign emails here, but I've also sprinkled in some other ways to get more data points. So I have a predetermined strategy here. It's quite simple at the top level execution. Where our data driven aspects are going to come in is through campaign builders evaluation features. Keeping it simple at this stage is going to let me layer on my questions and decisions at each communication launch. So those come into play with uh, segments, custom fields, and the use of dynamic content. So with Campaign Studio's dynamic and static list, those are found within segments. Um, this is what I will use to launch my campaign. To pull my audience together, I'll be grabbing different fields like uh, email address is not empty, visited the site within the last year or signed up in the past year, you know, those are profile and um, behavior-based segments. And so that's gonna ensure I have fairly active records. And this is the group that will receive each touch from September to November. So when creating any campaign, I'm going to have two other segments here. Um, it's the ones I have, the evaluation segment and the results segment. Um, so. What I'm also going to try to do here is, um, is have them follow, you know, clear naming conventions and clear definitions of what they are just to keep everything organized within the system as well. So an evaluation segment is going to ask questions throughout the campaign. So even though the builder will let me ask questions like has a record filled out a form or have they opened an email, I might need to create some other segments to start poking holes and asking the automation for more information. So the first touch, which is promoting new stock, I'm going to have a segment that looks at multiple layers of questions. I'm going to see if someone opened the email, clicked through, and made a purchase. That's one segment with three filters, something I can't do with necessarily within the builder, but it's something I can apply to the builder through segments. I might also look to see if someone opened, didn't click through the email, but still made a purchase before the next send goes out. This could also tell me that just by sending a message, I've sparked interest. So maybe the exact time the person read the email, they didn't have time to shop, but they did go back later and purchase. That is a collected data point. I now have a grouping of people who are interested in the brand, interested in shopping. I just have to find the best time to align my messages with their shopping habits. So. That sounds like a good A-B test to me in the future. <laughs> a few other evaluation segments um, could be visited several product pages. Um, did they mark favorites? Did they refer a friend? Those are things I can use UTM parameters for. If they did any of those things, I can create a new branch in my campaign path, something with personalized messaging to start off the next email, something like, Thanks for referring friend. How about matching jackets for those two seater chairlifts or thanks for shopping skis. Check out these airplane, airplane um, friendly bags to pack them for your winter trips. Um, a result segment is the final one here is also something I like to put together to simply see who did what when they're flowing through a campaign. Uh, this is definitely something you can pull together post campaign using filters, but I like to see who did what in real time like sending all openers of the first send to one bucket and sending any inactives to another. I might even create a segment to push records to post campaign to see who didn't engage at all. Uh, that could turn into a different win back campaign, which is also data driven. Uh, another example here could be who from this campaign also referred a friend. I would want to create a field for the, for the results to filter off of, you know, who actually did that. So that leads me to our next slide here. Um, another interesting feature <laughs> that can help you to drive your campaigns is the ability to add as many custom fields as you need. I put a few in here that I would create specifically for my autumn 2020 campaign, uh, a couple of engagement specific fields uh, to ensure I'm marketing to people appropriately. I might have a spring 2021 campaign that I can use based off of this data. So last purchase date greater than or equal to September 2020, uh, that might show some interesting data points. Um, I also have a few other profile specific data points here. If I was to customize an email or a landing page, I might want to know which mountain or resort the customer most frequents, and then I can add imagery. So if a customer selects Whistler, I can add an Im image of the resort. 
um, to help show my brand is listening to what they're telling me. So likewise, I might be able to use a focus item in the website or a, a form to quickly ask, you know, where are you visiting this year? We have local deals, uh, another way to ramp up your database. And so that's going to help to understand if there could be another mountain they like to visit. This could tell me where to send maybe local ski gear, but it could also help me to understand if the customer travels. Maybe they need a boot bag for the plane, um, just more upsell opportunities. So because I'll be doing an email drip campaign, I'll explain how emails can take your campaigns to the next level. So hi, first name in an email, it's just expected at this point. As a customer, you're giving that information away. Typically on sign up or membership registration, customers need more uh, than this. They expect a one-to-one -one personalized experience in every channel, every time they interact with your brand. The best experience a customer has becomes the expected experience a customer has with all brands. And this is where a team's creativity and tool savvy can merge to start lifting your brand to the next level. So a next level campaign uh, is going to use dynamic content. So this is different than personalization tokens because I'm not simply grabbing a piece of profile data and telling my customers, see, look, I can show your name. <laughs> I'm actually giving an experience here. So if I tap into geolocation, um, and I know it's a little small here, <laughs> but um, I wanna use home mountain, maybe that's something I collected as a dynamic filter. I can, in the email, show more than one simple message. For the example here, I can show the White Mountains if someone is on the East Coast and the Rocky Mountains if someone is on the West Coast. Um, I could take that a step further too and add Adirondacks, Sierra Nevadas. I would just need to add more variants here. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm only creating one email, not two or three or four, just one, but using dynamic content and my own custom fields built off of variants. So this is going to cut down the amount of paths you need to create, create in Campaign Builder. It's gonna cut down the amount of emails you need to build while also utilizing a data-driven approach to help personalize experiences with every campaign. So if I don't have this info for a record, a default version is always available to catch any I might have missed. Uh, so make sure, um, it makes sense though, and it can appeal to anyone who might not have those data points powering your segments. It might not have Home Mountain for everyone, so something generic is gonna need to work there. So now that my email uh, content, uh, custom fields and segments are set up, I can move into building out the data-driven automation in Campaign Builder. So I wanna make sure that every single component of your campaign has a purpose and relates back to your goals. Campaign Builder is a very powerful feature on Modic uh, with lots of decisions and paths to create. So make sure you start off with your default path and then layer on from there. So the first step of my campaign is going to be building out the email touches. So I have five emails spaced about two weeks apart. That will be what I set up first. Since I have only one email per touch, remember I have dynamic content powering the personalization experiences in all emails. My path is going to be quite simple. I know what days I'm sending and I know everyone is getting all five touches. I'm not branching out at any point. I'm letting my data power the messages, simpl simplifying the paths and create more personalization. I'm doing a small lift with big impacts. So I will still be able to ask the campaign several questions as it's flowing through to collect data points. Uh, I can ask different engagement points like who visited a certain page or many pages. I can apply decisions like who opened the email and send them to a segment. I can also update field values if they look, um, if they took a certain engagement action. So a simple true false on a question like filled out a survey uh, could be a custom field to gather engagement data and prep for another survey in a few months. I, I now know who's actively responding to me. So in the examples I have here, um, I can ask if they were visiting more than one page. I might be able to label them as hyperactive customer at that point, knowing that the information I sent in the email was successful enough to spark engagement. So this could translate into different questions about who is hyperactive but didn't shop. Um, 
I might be able to focus in on some other marketing approaches to help push them to shop. You know, maybe someone was just not ready or maybe my brand's checkout process is too complicated. Whatever it is, I'm able to set myself up to capture data points through questions. So I'd like at this point um, to call out reports. So <laughs> even though I do recommend using results segments, it's also important to utilize the reports feature here. Uh, so this will allow you to um, still be nimble and share results and progress more easily. Uh, you might have one person um, on your team requesting certain merchandising category or SKU, and you could easily create a custom report for one custom field and create uh, you know, a data point around it, a report for somebody uh, that might be waiting for spe something specific from you. Um, so to wrap up, I want to focus on how your campaigns will always be teaching you something. You might not have success with every campaign, but you can take but you can make them personalized and you will learn something. I know my team members um, that I work with might get distressed with uh, low open rates, but I like to show them that it's actually a data point. We learn something uh, that we can pivot away from. Next send, try a different approach. Is it time of day? Is that wrong? Is the day in general wrong? Is the context lost in the wording of the subject line? Could this info just not resonate with the selected audience? Get all data points, all things that I can create custom fields for and fill in um, with values automatically within the campaign builder. I can just let that do the work for me. <laughs> So those types of metrics are considered behavioral data points, which are important too. You might um, have the ideal audience built up with profile data, but that audience might not react to what you're trying to get them to do. So layer in behavioral data, because this is also something that shows your audience that you listen to them. So uh, that was a journey through creating data-driven campaigns and Campaign Studio. I have added the Acquia blog um, as a great way for future um, reading on personalization content. And if you're new to Modic or Acquia's Campaign Studio, I'd just like to say, <laughs> just um, put it out there to get your hands on a seven-day sandbox. Um, it's a great tool to um, really explore the tool. So I want to thank everyone again, and thanks for tuning in. Thanks so much, Manny. Um, that was really quick, and that was really well um, understood. All right, so um, if you'd like to um, ask questions, please um, use the link on the screen to ask your questions. So I will, be, I would love to be able to share them with you um, to ask uh, Manny about them. OK, great. So um, I have some few questions I would like to ask you, Manny, um, before we start having the questions coming in. So um, I want to ask you this question. How does a multi campaign builder, how can you compare it to other um, customer journey features in other platforms? Yeah, yeah, great. So I um, can definitely say that uh, the Campaign Studio or Modix Campaign Builder is the most fluid you know, tool that I have worked with, um, worked with several out there, you know, I know that um, they all can, you know, accomplish the automation tasks, filtering, um, you know, different branches of segments and things like that. But with um, Campaign Builder, just the literal dragging, the literalness of like, I am on a whiteboard planning out my map, like planning everything out is just is just so incredibly easy um it makes things really easy to pivot to and other platforms might have to start over or start a new version um it's really really easy to get like different data points in throughout campaigns so i might have a team member that wants to learn something but it's already started um maybe a welcome series i don't have to stop and recreate i can just append in the different data points so that to me is is a big big um, differentiator with um modic uh modix campaign builder okay great great so um ono is asking um for how long would yeah. this key campaign run mm -hmm. and um do you edit them when they are running so he's yeah. asking if you can be able to edit 
Yeah, yeah, great question. So um, if I was running this, uh, again, imaginary, but if I was running this type of campaign, um, I know that I would start in about September and run through probably Cyber Monday. So that does give me eight to 10 weeks possibly to start getting a campaign running. And I would definitely pause at, at different points. Um, so using the email builders dynamic content features, I think that's a great way to be able to pivot. So I might find out more data points after the first send, after the second send. Um, you know, I can look at the shopping data, maybe that's telling me something new. And so I can use dynamic content to edit the email at any point. You know, maybe we're selling out of a lot of stock and black, we don't even need Black Friday. So, you know, maybe that just turns into something else, like some sort of, you know, company update, something along those lines. Can I can edit and pivot at any point there. So, um, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I would edit at any time. Okay, another question from Chris. So um, Chris is asking for personal brands or for solopreneurs just starting off with little traffic. For how many visitors per month should I switch from newsletter to a more complex campaigns? Uh, I wouldn't let the a low volume or low database dictate whether or not you want to start using dynamic content. I think that getting into that practice even with just two people is something that you can really get better results from. Um, you know, it could just be messaging like, um, if you just send out a newsletter and you have a group of people that you know might just be a month in, a week in, a day in, that can be a different paragraph, like maybe a different intro paragraph than maybe people that are a year into um, being a member or, you know, having signed up for your service or brand. Um, you know, just like, you know, welcome, you know, in your first month, this is what you'll experience versus maybe some other tailored messaging to people who have been with you throughout your life cycle a little bit longer. Okay, great. All right. So Neil, Neil is asking, um, how have you found managing campaigns over multi software updates? Are there any other things to bear in mind? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I will say, you know, Modic being a pretty new and young tool, when those updates do come, it's things that I've been waiting for, that I've been excited for. It's things that have made working with it a lot easier. Um, but, you know, the, the great thing is that, you know, with the openness of the community and also, you know, working so closely with, you know, the developers that we do have um, at Acquia, it's, I, I will say the communication is not lost. Um, help is always available um, and the shared experiences that we're able to have, you know, I think that that's just a really important thing. So I really wouldn't say um, managing around that has been too difficult just yet. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's mostly because everything that comes is, is a very positive thing, uh, in my opinion. Okay. All right. So um, we have another question from Robert too. Um, I have been using the opened email and um, clicked email, but I have been receiving a lot of false positives. How yeah. are you dealing with those? Yeah, yeah. So I know that um, with looking at red or open email rates, you know, you're going to see things um, differently, especially if it's B2B, when you are hitting those Outlook inboxes. Preview mode is just going to render differently. I, I mean, it's it's definitely going to do those things. <laughs> so I really like to always attach my filters with an, another. I'm not just sorry. Let me back up. <laughs> so I know within Campaign Builder, you can look, look at things like did they open? Did they click an email? Um, and that's great. It's a great way to bucket and put things together. But what I prefer to do is to make them a little bit more complex. So I will have a segment that will look at, did they open and do this? Did they open and visit the site? Did they open and you know purchase, do something along the line um, a little bit later? And so instead of having that decision after um, an email goes out, I instead ask it, um, a condition and I will ask it, is it on this segment? Then do this because that's going to allow me to put in more complex filter questions so that I can get that better read um, and avoid the false positive situations. Um, so I hope that 
hope that helps. A <laughs> um, little workaround that I've been doing with the tool throughout the past couple of, um, of months. All right. Okay. So uh, we got another question from Joawana. Um, what beginner's guide documents or courses or weather blocks will you recommend for total beginners? I only know how to set up and install Multic, and that's it. I really want to start using it and make the most out of it soon. Okay, before you answer that question, um, Joanna, maybe you mixed it. Um, yesterday there was um, training, Multicon training. Maybe you missed it, so you may want to look out for something like that in the future. So, um, Mariana, you can just give your own answer. Yeah, I, I will say that um, I know I went Mami. through a lot of um, YouTube tutorials. I know the community is great at putting those up. Okay, great. So, um, Joanna, check out YouTube tutorials, look out of website, and then you can be able to learn more. Yeah, Multic website, the Multic YouTube channel to add yeah. some great resources. I've learned a lot from there too. So, you can just check them out. There are some Multic minutes, just short videos, maybe two to three minutes and yep. detailed explanation about what you need to do when it comes to campaigns and any other thing. All right, great. Okay, so we have a, two questions from Baco, and uh, one of them is saying, would editing the email affect people who are already in the campaign? Yeah, great, great question. So you can't go back and edit an email that somebody's already received, but the next touch, you can, you can definitely edit that. So um, you might have, a default of just like, I know I'm sending five emails, no matter what these five are going out, I can go back at any point and, and edit two, three, four, I can edit any of them um, before they receive it. So that's a great feature about Campaign uh, Builder, is that I don't have to pause and the ad, it's, it's really great, you can edit anytime. All right, second question from Baco, I've been editing campaign and it affects contact in the campaign in that they don't receive new actions. Um, Baku, um maybe he's trying to say when it kind of do any editing on a campaign that it affects the content and they yeah. don't get to receive those campaigns again. Yes, yes. Um, so I might be, there might be two parts of that, but I know that if you start adding in several campaigns after somebody has already started to flow through, they're not gonna, they're not gonna pick up on different spots if they've already hit it. Um, hopefully that makes sense. If, if I'm coming through a campaign and maybe I get an email or text message, I, I and then I hit another node, I won't be able to branch back out from that like top level if it's already happened. Um, so that is something that you do want to make sure you prepare for. Um, you can you want to make sure that you're you know, questions and decisions are in there, um, but content of like emails, text messages, um, web hooks, things like that, that can be edited at any point. Um, but the, the setup you do want to make sure is, um, is solidified before you do hit publish. Um, Peony is asking, um, not um, if someone unsubscribed from a certain newsletter, can that person still, uh, can he still send them transactional or automated emails? Uh, currently, at this point, if you unsubscribe, that is global opt out. So, um, a feature that is coming, um, but at this point, an unsubscribe from any piece of email communication is going to opt you out from anything in the future. Great. So, um, I think for G GDPR reasons, uh, you won't want to do that too. Yes. Okay, great. So we have another question from Francisca. How can we use focus item in campaigns to trigger it just for a dedicated target? I tried, but it's not working. Um, yeah, so uh, with focus items, um, I'm gonna be honest, I have not used one in a campaign just yet. So I might not have the exact experience um, that you are specifically asking about. Um, but what I do, what I have used them for is to collect data that's going to drive a campaign. So it's, more, I would consider it more to be like the trigger um, of something that's happening. And then on the flip side of that, they can also be dynamic. So if I have collected a data point throughout a campaign, 
then I can use a custom field to either say show this or that within the focus item. So um, utilizing them as pieces of the campaign isn't something that I've done. And I, I got to be, I, I do apologize. I'm not, <laughs> maybe might not be fully ramped up on that piece of it. So I'm either using them for um, action or reaction, not during. Okay. All right. So we have a question from Inda. Um, Inda is asking cross channel engagement or omni channel experience. So can we use SMS or web notification or in app message in same campaign, send SMS and later email after one and so on mobile notification in app messages. So trying to use different um, channels to be able to keep in touch with the um, target audience. So Yes. Um, yes, you can definitely utilize um, multi-channel messaging within campaigns, uh, within Campaign Builder. Um, I would just want to um, just say, you know, I, you, if you think you might need to branch out and have two campaigns to power this, that might be something to consider. Um, but if it is something that's, um, you know, a confirmation of some point, um, if it's, you know, we got maybe it's a webinar and you're sending out reminders with um, SMS or something like, or push or something along those lines. I think that's great to keep within a campaign. Um, but there could be instances where you might need to branch out um, and have two, um, you know, similar campaigns um, associated with maybe a parent campaign that are doing this. Um, and, and I apologize, I'm not sure I know the exact situation, but if you can um, do the full plan, just map it all out and test it, uh, that would be my biggest um, um, piece of advice for that one. All right, so um, we have another question from Elena. Um, Elena is asking, is it possible to align, for example, social media campaign with multi-email campaigns to create full omnichannel experience? Yeah, so I know that um, we do have ways to incorporate different social media um, channels into campaigns and combine them with emails. That is absolutely something that we can do. What you would want to make sure you're prepped for is to have your custom fields created. So even though I might be getting information um, like through, you know, through Twitter information and I can reply to somebody's handle, um, I would still want to make sure that I have custom fields set up to make decisions in campaigns. So even though I can say, you know, now, you know, tweet this out or respond to this person's handle, I still would want to make sure that I have custom fields set up that are saying like, maybe it's a true false, you know, maybe it's asking like, do they have a Twitter handle and do they opt in? You know, you want to make sure that you're doing uh, those types of questions ahead of time. Um, again, testing, I think is the best thing though, to, you know, set up making sure you're flowing through correctly before you do hit launch and anything like that. But it's absolutely something that can be accommodated within one campaign. All right, so um, Ono is um, asking another question again, but this time around, she's um, yeah, Ono is appreciating you by saying great talk, Manny, and um, he's also asking, do you also automatically create campaigns instead of using the campaign builder by end? Um, well, I would have to say, I do have to build everything in campaign builder. I do have to build everything out. I have to think of my questions. So I will often, maybe I'm just very old school. I might actually like write it down on a piece of paper. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I know I have these three touches going out. I know I have a webinar, two invites, and then all the responses that go out afterwards. I might, you know, put that out in my mind. So I do have to build a lot of times, you know, the emails, I might have to build out different custom fields to make sure their questions are there. But that setup really makes it just set and go once I do have um, a campaign ready to launch. So there's definitely build up. There's definitely a lot of that going on. But I consider that to be the strategy, the fun part of it. Um, but you know, once once they're up and going, you know, they're automated. I've had ones that are on for years. Like they're going. <laughs> they're just <laughs> they're good to go. Um, so it, does, it is going to need prep work. Um, but that automation piece is definitely something you can rely on. All right, so we have another question from Roberto. Um, Roberto is asking about dynamic content. 
So you mentioned that um, by now, name personalization is expected, mm -hmm. trying to personalize um, their names. In your experience, what are the most important personalization content, if any? Um, I think you use an example of showing different yeah. mountains in your in your presentation. Yeah. So um, in, in that case, I think this is a really, really great question. So, um, you know, high first name, that's just a personalization token. Where I think is in more interesting and more deeper level marketing is when you are using any type of piece of behavioral data. So I think it's interesting when, you know, a brand recognizes that I have or haven't done something. Um, I sometimes think about like when I signed up for a gym, um, they knew I hadn't come and came in to pick up my, my card yet to swipe in. So I kept getting emails saying like, hi, Marnie, <laughs> make sure you pick up your card or you won't be able to enter the gym. So those types of things, like it's looking not just at, you know, profile data and displaying it, it's making a decision. So I could have gotten a message that said, congratulations, you got your card, come on in. <laughs> so those are the types of things that I think um, are good personalization content. Like, you know, at the simplest point, it's just like, um, you know, what do we know about you? What can we show that isn't creepy? <laughs> you want to make sure you're not being creepy, of course. But, um, <laughs> the, I think that those are just um, some, some great things. It's, it's really about looking into your data, looking into your goals and finding, um, you know, maybe just what's going to delight. Okay. All right. So we have one other question from Inda. Um, Inda is asking, in focus item, how does it work upon the exist? How does it work upon the exist some action like pop-up? Is the mouse movement, can you please up? Okay. Um, Inda is trying to ask about focus item. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure if I'm fully understanding the question, but um, so with focus items, you know, it's just like any website pop-up that you might see. Um, you can control, as the user, you're going to be able to control, you know, just like click out of it. I'm not sure if um, it's like I I can, um, if you're talking about like I scroll my mouse to the top right, like I'm, I'm about to exit your page, then you can, you can pop one up that way. Um, but to make it, um, to get rid of the message though, there's just going to be like a, a exit, like a little X button. But you, you do have control, like am I scrolling down a few lines? then pop up. If I'm scrolling to the exits button, then it can it can pop up. So hopefully that answered it. Um, but yeah, those, they're really fun. I, I enjoy focus items. <laughs> All right. So, um, OK, Inda is asking again, is it possible to evaluate SMS read and then action like email reads? Same way, is it possible for WhatsApp messages read and then the next action? Yeah, so I'll be honest, um, I have not used um, I, I don't know if it's WhatsApp messages. I, I haven't used that within the tool. Um, so I'm not familiar with the plugin or how that is working at this point. Um, great the great question though for um, uh, you know our plugin uh, types of forums. But um, for evaluating red messages, we can do that. So you could, I don't know if your campaign wants to look something like um, they got the message, there was a response or read, or, or read to it, and then you can, um, you know, pivot on that. So that's collected data point, yeah. All right, so Mani, I still got questions for you. Um, so um, the question I'm asking you now is, um, you mentioned um, naming convention for segments. What yep. type of naming convention do you use? Uh, yeah, so um, if anybody is a user of Modic, you know that there's no foldering system. Um, definitely designed to keep things, you know, more searchable, uh, more indexable. So that's um, a great feature. But in, you know, I, I understand that it, it does take some getting used to. And so when I'm doing things like creating my segments, my evaluation segments, my results segments, I make sure that it's clear what it is. You know, is it a segment results? then maybe the campaign name. Uh, so it's just keeping in line with, um, you know, your overall thing. I'm not searching around for something. So that's um, that's how I like to um, work with, you know, the naming conventions and making sure everything kind of flows together to get around, you know, maybe my uh, need to folder. So that's something that um, I have found to be extremely helpful. 
All right, before you go, one last question. Sure. How can custom fields become dynamic content? Yeah, yeah, great. So um, any custom field that you create or any custom field that is native in the tool is something you can use dynamic content on in web, um, in web pages uh, built with Modic or with uh, emails. So I might have, for instance, I know I use the example of Home Mountain. Um, that's something that I can utilize. Um, so everybody that has one value is going to get something. Everybody that has another something, and then a default. So that's how that works. So anything you can let your mind soar with that. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much again, uh, Manny. Uh, it's been a very wonderful session. Um, although the presentation was quite brief, but the, the questions were so much that um, it has been so much engaging. And I'm sure a lot of people um, like this session. And um, so um, we'll be ending this session here. But I want you to please go to the networking session, networking area. Mm -hmm so that you can be able to catch up with other people that might like to have one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. Sure. All right, thank you so much for your time, Manny. Thank you. Thank you.